I mean, I could, but why would I want to? <laughs> you fat! Welcome to Girls One Pod Polo Ep with me. And I meant to say solo ep recording on Wurundjeri Country for the last one this year. Oh, Rachie. I know she said. <laughs> it's sad, isn't it? But it's great because, you know, it's Christmas time and everyone loves Christmas except for me. Do you know I was watching something the other day and the, uh, the kids, the kids, the kids are like, What do you mean Love Actually is a really popular movie for Christmas? Have you seen it? And they go into it and it's like, "Mm mm-hmm. I always send it to Kitty Flanagan. Kitty Flanagan and I every year send each other something about how much we hate or other people hate Love Actually. And so I sent it to her and said, Merry tradition to us. (laughs) She's the best. Oh, also, as we were walking here this morning – up the hallway, that is, not, you know, walking to work. <laughs> oh, I love just the thought of it. Um, I said to the receptionist, I've got toast, which I had in my hand and made my producer, Rachel, laugh. And then I just, you know, automatically went into the reference, which so many people know, which is I carried a watermelon. And Rachel went, what? You, what? What? Oh, I know. Everyone that's listening right now has just done that FFS emoji. They're just smacking their heads right now. SMH emoji. She doesn't know where a carrot or watermelon comes from. Your cuz. She doing this. She came with me. She's with me. A carrot or watermelon. This is how I know now that I'm officially old and you're officially young. Because the fact that you don't know that that's Baby Houseman from Dirty Dancing when she first arrives at the hall to Dirty Dance, and that's what she says because she's so awkward. I carried a watermelon. And everyone said it for decades. Well, clearly decades because (laughs) that's how old the movie is now. 1987 that movie came out. I went to the movies four times to see her carry a watermelon. And you have crushed my very soul. (laughs) She's laughing. She finds this hilarious. And my stomach just rumbled. I don't know if that's come up on the microphone or not, but that's the toast. I had cheese on toast, if anyone's wondering. So everyone that's listening right now, please DM me and tell me what you think of Rachel and her inability to know pop references that are important to me. Just back me up here. Everyone knows I carried a watermelon. Everyone. Like, even Angie knew that, and she's only, like, two minutes older than you. (laughs) Maybe it's because I made her watch that movie. We need to spend nights together, I think, and I need to show you all my 80s movies, don't I? That would be fun. Come on, talk, talk. Everyone wants to hear your dulcet tones. For the last one of the year, I will. Yay. Yes, what, what 80s film do you know of that you do really like? Was Star Wars in the 80s? No, that's the 70s. Oh, it's even better. Okay, that's even Okay, so you're more sci-fi. Yeah. i got some good ones for you. <laughs> like Weird Science. I'm going to get you on to Weird Science. It's, it's a comedy rom-com mm-hmm. and it was Robert Downey Jr.'s first movie. So there you go. That's, that's what, and it's one of my favourite movies from the 80s. I have seen Dirty Dancing. But yes. like once. Yeah. <laughs> once. That should be illegal. <laughs> Like there should be an actual disclaimer on it when you <laughs> now stream it that says must watch more than once. Must watch more than once, or you will go to hell. <laughs> Who knows? I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Don't apologize to me. <laughs> apologize to humanity. Apologize to the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, get off the microphone, please. <laughs> I've got something to Jones about today. Jones about. I mean, who came up with that, Ricardo? Who came up with that? <laughs> I've got something to talk about today. Do you know what? On Monday, for the past couple of months, I've had quite a bit of abdominal pain and it's always there. It's very dull. I call it like um, a lamp that's being turned on and it gets warmer and sometimes it gets really hot. So it's not heat, but that's the pain if you could imagine it. And um, during my period, which is now just spotting because I have a marina, excuse me, 
That's the toast. I still have that period, but it's a spot period now. But I get this, oh, God, awful pain, like um, sharp stabbing pain. So it, it, it all goes with that. I've got ovary pain. I've got hips. Like it's all there. Could be perimenopausal, but... I went back to my gyno, who I only saw in January because I had my marina put in February. So, and everything's gone really well. But over the last couple of months, this pain has been getting quite, well, it's more just, it's there all the time. So it's like, I'm not living with this. So I went in. She is great. Am I allowed to say her name? Her name is Dr. Mugda Kulkarni. She is in Melbourne. She's at a heap of locations. You know, she goes from Epworth to the Monash to the um, Cabrini Hospital and also just Sweets. She's this young gun that is just brilliant. Funny story, I put another friend of mine onto her for her daughter who has dreadful endometriosis, a teenage girl, and on Monday... I went in because there was a cancellation. Like, you know, when you ring, you're like, can I get the first available next? Like, I don't know how long it's going to be. And they said, we've got a cancellation for Monday, if you if you can do it. And I went, yes, yes, I can do it. I went in. First thing that um, Mugda said to me was, Evie, can you do something for me? And I said, yes, of course. And please let me pay for it. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I was, I was, I was intrigued. I was piqued. What are you asking of me? And she said, "On your pod, can you please talk about something for me?" And I said, "Yeah, absolutely." Like it's gynecological. And she said, "Yeah." She said, "Everyone, it's the popular thing is endometriosis, breast cancer." She says, "Everyone knows about it. Everyone's talking about this." Um, what do you call when someone is the ambassador for? She said, I want you to talk about prolapse, vaginal prolapsing. And I said, I can do that. Absolutely. I said, because my friend just had one. And she said, they are so common. They are so incredibly common. And in older women, they're having them and they're just not doing anything about it and talking to anyone about it, not talking to their friends about it. They are just living with it because they think it's normal. And I said, oh, my God, yes, I can absolutely talk about this. So I'm talking about it. Um, a uterine prolapse, there's also a pelvic prolapse. So they're all vaginal prolapses, okay? They come out of the vaginal hole. Um, it occurs when a weakened or damaged muscle and the connective tissue, such as the ligaments, allow the uterus to drop through the vagina. Common causes are pregnancy, okay? That, that's your common cause. And that's what happened to my friend, I think. And she doesn't mind me telling this story. She felt a lump, which is how you know it's there. It's, it, you know, it's a weird to go to the, the toilet. And all of a sudden she felt what she thought was her vagina falling out. And it is. So, I mean, it's not your vagina, it's your uterus. She said to her husband, can you come and have a look at this? And he said, yeah. And they're, you know, very open about everything, as you should be with your partner. And he had a look and went, oh, my God, what is that? It was like a flesh, you know, like a brain kind of. And she goes, what, what? And he's like, I, I don't, is something coming out of you? And it turned out it was her uterus. She went to the doctor, it was fixed. And that's what um, Dr. Mugda wanted to say, how common it is and how many different ways you can fix it. There's surgery, but there's also pessaries. There's also um, medicine because it can cause incontinence, uh, which is overactive bladder. And that can have you going to the toilet all night long. So if you're listening and this has either happened to you or you've never really thought about it, or you have someone older in your life. I spoke to a woman yesterday, a good friend of mine who's in her 60s, and it looks like she has one. And she was like, I don't even have a gyno. What do you mean they can be fixed? And well, they can, they can. And she was a bit worried about the mesh. They use a mesh um, to, they sew that in, I think, and then the skin goes through it. There has been a class action on that particular procedure from some people in the UK, US and Australia. I must put that out there. Because the studies weren't done, of course, for women, they weren't done enough. The majority of people that get that procedure, it works really well for. But there were enough women to make a class action against that. You know, this is a good thing for some. I have mesh in me from, that's what 
they use to cover up, like to keep your hernias from popping back out again. So I've got two hernias. Um, so whenever I do like any x-rays or anything, there's that little mesh comes up there. Um, so it's the same mesh that they started using for, and it turns out it was the pelvic prolapse, not the uterine prolapse prolapse that was having the problems. So keep that in mind. But if you are having this kind of a problem, there is help. And it's quite simple. In this country, Dr. Mukta said, we've got great medicine, great surgeries, great, we're, you know, Western medicine is wonderful. So make sure that you get seen. And please, let's start talking about these things. You know, last week's episode with Shirley Horton, wow. The feedback I've had, we've had from that, uh, just on Instagram is incredible. If you haven't listened to that episode, please do go and listen to it because what we showed on Instagram is just a snippet of a really brilliant episode. And Shelley is so informed. She works very closely with Dr. Ginny Mansfield, who has done incredible work. Um, but just the feedback and comments of women saying, oh, that's happened to me or this is happening to me. So I want to talk about that. Let's keep talking about it. But also let's start talking about prolapses as well because pretty unsexy but really important to talk about. Nothing to be ashamed of, not gross, nothing to keep secret. You don't have to go and, you know, talk to everyone about it, but talk to, talk, talk to someone that you trust but talk to your doctor. I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do, I'm going to do, 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 a useful fact for you. Yeah, I mean, I could, but why would I want to? Oh, I've had that song in my head for at least 10 minutes. I'm going to do a Christmas useless, useful fact this year because... Well, it's Christmas time. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 I know, ho, ho, weird. Did you know, Rachel and everyone listening, Christmas wasn't always on December 25? What? Jesus wasn't born on that day? What? Who are we? Where have we been? What's going on? Yeah, shocky. While Christmas celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ, the actual date of the big event is lost to history. There's no mention of December 25 in the Bible. And many historians say Jesus was most likely born in the spring. That's about like between March and May or June or something. Like it's somewhere in the in the year. I don't know. No, I do. Um, some historians posit, this is what the... The useful fact says, some historians posit, the date was originally chosen because it coincided with the pagan festival of Saturnalia, which is the honour. It honours agriculture and the god Saturn. Um, it's all about celebrating and gift giving. So some miraculous genius has gone, well, let's just put the two together and make his birth about giving gifts to really noisy children who don't deserve a damn. <laughs> also, can I just say one last thing, please, about Christmas? I put this up on my Instagram. If you do follow me, you would have seen it on my stories. There was a video of a man. Um, everyone's opening Christmas presents. The kids, the three kids, they're all screaming and ripping. And he's like, look at this. Look at the, my. This is my chair. This is my pile. It's huge. Oh look! Even Jack's got one. Like this is the dog. And then he turns around to a lounge, and it's got the stocking on there. And he's like, oh! And he pushed it, and said, "That's em why is that? Em whose stocking is this?" And he turns the camera around. There's the the wife is sitting in her pajamas on another couch with a cup of coffee, and she just goes, "That's mine." And he goes, "Why? Why is it empty?" And she goes, "I guess no one bought me anything." And the video just stops. So obviously he's like, ooh, shit, you know, but what? Do you know how many homes that is happening in around the world? I just spoke to a woman at the dog park this morning that just had to go to Dubai last week for work. And she goes, it just, she says it was great, but, you know, it's just put me back on all the things I need to do. 
I said, so does, did your husband just pick up and get all the stuff done for Christmas that you would have been doing in that time? And she said, oh, oh it's that scoffing. Oh, oh as if. <sighs> if your husband doesn't get you anything every year for Christmas, if you have to buy your own gifts, stop buying him things, okay? Buy things for the kids and tell him he needs to buy something for the kids as well. But we need we need to start changing it. We need I know it's exhausting. I really do and you're already exhausted at this time of year. But nothing is going to change. And you know what? Something that you're doing less. So I know it's exhausting because of the tantrum hill probably chuck, but let that be another notch in that belt in your brain that is the one belt that says I want to leave, it's another notch in there. You know, I'm an advocate for, I honestly believe that you'll be better off financially, emotionally, everythingly when you're not looking after another child in your home. So on that note, you know, enjoy yourself. I know Christmas is extremely stressful for so many people and I know it's a joyful day, but you know what? For mums... It's one of the hardest days of the year. It's fucking exhausting. And I see you all and I know how much you do. So here's to you and here's to you having those drinks that you so sorely deserve. And I hope your kids really do appreciate that Christmas is to be made. It's not to be bought. It's about getting together and it's about, you know, My mum died before Christmas, two days before Christmas. And every year my mum would make me come to a Christmas get-together because she would say, you never know when it's going to be the last one. And, you know, Rach, you had your last Christmas last year with your grandfather and seven years ago I had my last one with my mum, or eight years ago. So that's what it's about. So can we just please remember that, that it's about connection and it's about telling each other that you love each other because you don't know when it's going to be your last one or their last one. F*** the presents. If your kids can't get that, explain it to them because that's what it's for and some people can't afford presents. Have a wonderful Christmas and a great New Year. I will be on Channel 9 this year just for Victoria at one of the live locations, Treasury Gardens. Um, Crossing over to Evie Jones at Treasury Gardens. How's it going there, Evie? Oh, it's going really well. Everyone's in their reindeer. Oh, no, it's not Christmas. Everyone's in their big earrings. No, goggles, whatever. I'm here. Please be safe as well. I love you all. I'll see you next year.